Late today, President-elect Donald Trump naming hardline MAGA conservative Matt Gates as his pick for attorney general. The nomination comes as Donald Trump is already facing scrutiny for really this series of unusual picks for top posts, from Pentagon to the intelligence community, what I was just discussing with our colleague Nicole Wallace and what has been reverberating across Washington and anyone who's still following the news since the election over the last, say, 48 hours. Now, many, many people view Matt Gates as the most extreme in this group. It depends, of course, how you count it and what evidence you use. But Matt Gates is a self-avowed and admitted partisan warrior. That's the opposite of the nonpartisan credential sought for the nation's top law enforcement officer. Gates moved to the right of his own Republican leadership in the House. Famously, he helped dethrone a speaker who had been meeting with Donald Trump and arguing that he was Trump enough. Gates faced his own federal investigation for his own conduct, although he was not charged in that. But even in the polarized MAGA era, Matt Gates has been decried by his fellow Republicans, as well as Democrats and other observers alike, for putting the flame-throwing, vicious partisan antics that he is known for above any semblance or even gesture towards cooperation or caring about Congress's duties and the national interest. I've made it a living hell for the swamp rats, and many of them are retiring now. If the Republicans are in the majority and I have subpoena power, I will personally investigate BLM like I'm a Soros-funded prosecutor going after the Trump organization. Seize We're ashamed day. of Se nothing. Seize the day. We're proud of the work that we yeah. did on January 6th to That's make right. legitimate arguments about election integrity. We are going to go after this administrative state and we're going to start at the Department of Justice and the FBI. We either get this government back on our side or we defund and get rid of, abolish the FBI, CDC, ATF, DOJ, every last one of them. Those are his words in public. This is who Matt Gates is. And so here's what we're making sense of right now. Donald Trump, by tapping a partisan who vowed to, quote, go after DOJ, is doubling down on his clear, repeated public vows of retribution, of abusing power in ways that would clearly be potentially illegal or unconstitutional. These were the things that people sometimes said over the past months were not his focus or it was him being off message or get him returned to policy. No, this is the priority. You can see it in the personnel. It's what he intends to do with your federal government. And these are measures that, to be clear, very few politicians openly admit and which could saddle any future cases with claims of selective prosecution if Gates or other individuals go down this road with the power they would get in January if confirmed. Matt Gates built his career on a swift rise from a relatively obscure Florida backbencher to a MAGA lightning rod by helping Trump with exactly the projects that other Republicans would not join, including a role in trying to help overthrow Trump's 2020 loss, that is a failed effort which had Gates embroiled in the Jan 6 coup investigation, where Trump White House and other Republican aides testified under oath that Gates then was seeking a pardon for himself. Pardons, of course, are for criminals, for people seeking to get away from what they think would otherwise land them in jail. He was concerned about getting charged for his conduct. Trump's effort to elevate such a person to be the chief law enforcement officer is quite literally, quite substantively extreme. And no one this partisan has even been floated for a DOJ in either party since back to the Nixon era. The partisan disqualifications at stake here are not secret. They're not even disputed by Gates, who clashed with, of course, many Democrats and journalists, but ultimately his own Republican speaker on the House floor, if you remember this whole standoff. While the cameras rolled, Gates has repeatedly appeared on this program and also touted the same qualities that have always traditionally been disqualifying at DOJ. Intense partisanship, breaking rules, putting politics above your oath of office. And so briefly, I want to show you tonight, we did ask him about the Republicans who testified that he sought a pardon from criminal prosecution, which is now relevant as he is awaiting a Senate set of hearings about whether he will then take the power of overseeing criminal probes. 
if a pardon was requested, why not just tell us what were you worried about? What was it that you thought you or others might be indicted for? I do not remember it the same way Eric Hirschman does. Hold on now. Mr. Mr. Uh, 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 no, I'm going to let you finish, on. but oh, is Mr. McAtee a liar finish, as well? And, and yes, no. you may finish. Well, I, I don't. I, I had a lot of conversations with Mr. McAtee about pardons for other folks and different groups of people. When it comes to, you know, was I asking something specifically for me and only me under those circumstances? The answer would be no. Gates' answer, acknowledging plural pardon conversations, but issuing that kind of narrow denial that if he did ask for anything, he didn't ask only for himself. And these cabinet nominees must get through the U.S. Senate. The Constitution puts a clear limit on presidential appointments. It's actually in the very second section, after the first, dealing with executive power and saying the president shall nominate officers of the U.S. only by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Very clear. This is a rule the Senate has always cared about and that courts have generally enforced, with some rare exceptions for recess appointments. There's no precedent for breaking this rule with a high-ranking post like attorney general or defense secretary at the beginning of an administration when there isn't a recess with the intent to serve potentially up to four years for putting people in those top jobs without Senate approval. One Republican senator today is already publicly expressing concern about Gates. Several House Republicans reportedly gasped when hearing the Gates news today in a closed-door party meeting. Again, quoting my colleague Nicole Wallace, the shock comes first, but is not necessarily the point. As for inside the Department of Justice, officials who are familiar with many of Donald Trump's approaches still found the idea of Gates running this department as laughable, insane, and he obviously shouldn't be confirmable. So what's going on tonight? This is one of several early moves by President-elect Trump to rattle the system and to test what he might get away with while politically trying to overload everything so he gets away with more. In that sense, we have seen this plan before, this type of blueprint, although, quite frankly, we have never seen, even in the first term, Trump put someone like Gates up to run DOJ. But remember what else we saw this week? A written plan to purge generals, which was basically handed over to the Fox News sister publication, The Wall Street Journal, in what they often call a trial balloon. He didn't just go ahead and do it. He tried to put out this this leak that he might try to purge generals. This is after a tough set of news cycles where his campaign was running away from all the accusations from Republicans that he had said privately he wanted, quote, Hitler's generals. So this is real. This is also a test. These are things Donald Trump wants to do by virtue of the fact that he is trying to do them. But these are also tests of the Senate Republicans and what he calls his mandate or honeymoon period that presidents get. There was clearly not a lot of vetting or a lot of consultation, advice, and consent with the Senate. It is a test to see what he can get away with, and it is a test to see whether you and citizens of this country who are understandably maybe a little tired of all this and just exhausted by an election we lived through, but whether you are still paying attention. As promised, I'm joined by two veterans of the DOJ, former U.S. Attorney for the famed Southern District of New York, David Kelly, also my former boss, and Barrett Berger, former federal prosecutor in that and the Eastern District of New York. Uh, welcome to both of you, David. For someone watching and thinking there are debates over all kinds of nominees, where does Matt Gates fit into normal, historically somewhat more political or ideological or completely off the table? I think it's more the latter. Uh, look, the president has the power to, you know, put up anybody he wants. Um, but traditionally, this goes to somebody who is not political, who is apolitical, who is maybe partisan but doesn't express the partisanship uh, in, in carrying out their duties. And, and here you have somebody who is expressly saying the reason why he wants the job is to do just that, to engage as a partisan warrior and using the Justice Department for do, to do that. Now, it's one thing to say that, and it's yet another thing to do that. And that proof will be in the pudding whether or not that's something he actually tries to do. And if he tries to do it or does do it, um, I think it would be quite a shock to the whole system. Uh, Barrett, you know who doesn't think uh, Matt Gates is Senate confirmable is Matt Gates. Uh, I've mentioned that some of the things we have reported that might sound critical are just things he's admitted to. And so this is, as I say, coming from Trump, but going towards the Senate. This was just last year. Who was Matt Gates? 
for many of the crimes that we are observing, the statute of limitations is five years. And so we could send criminal referrals to the Department of Justice. We go take the White House back. And you never know, David, it may be an Attorney General Matt Gates down the road or someone of, of Ooh, my liking I who like will that. be there to actually enforce the law and provide the accountability. I like that. Attorney General Matt Gates. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Man. The world is not ready, probably. Certainly, Senate confirmation wouldn't be. But, you know, well, we're getting a boy that. can dream. Certainly, Senate confirmation wouldn't be, he said. I feel like you just manifested that into being, right, by talking about it. I mean, look, I think the significance of Matt Gates as the attorney general, there's, there's really three main ways, right? The first is that he would enforce the president's priorities. Big priorities that we talk about all the time, like mass deportations, and then more everyday ones. What positions are prosecutors in the Department of Justice going to be taking on sentencing issues? The second is he has the ability, as we've been discussing a lot, to shut down criminal cases, investigations into President-elect Trump, which certainly he will and has expressed willingness to do that. Um, and the third, I think, is the most significant, and that's that the attorney general, and we both worked under many different attorney generals, but they set the tone for the top. Is this going to be a department that's committed to transparency, to ethics, to independence, or is this going to be a department that is used for political reform? Where does he stack up against recent attorneys general? Well, he stacks up in the sense that he does not have experience as a former prosecutor. I mean, that's a big departure that we've seen from former AGs. This is what uh, Steve Bannon has been saying, uh, David, uh, in concert with all of this effort to take the powers of the DOJ and turn it into what normally would be illegal political vendettas. Biden's getting swept out. Kamala Harris is getting swept out. MSNBC is getting swept out. The Justice Department's getting swept out. The FBI is getting swept out. You people suck, okay? And now you're going to pay the price for trying to destroy this country. I don't know if there's really words to respond to that. Um, look, it, it certainly sounds like, um, you know, it, it, excessive abuse of power, if, if Steve Bannon had any. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a lot of talk. The question is, you know, how, if at all, would they be able to execute that in a, in a lawful fashion?